Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Project Ozone 3 Kappa Mode. Oh, yeah, guys. Last episode, we ended up getting our applied energistic system all hooked up. It's so good. We only have one ME controller, but that's all we need for right now. That's running our entire system right here. Now, it is true we could have used an energy acceptor instead of making the controller and have the same functionality that we have right now, but... Yeah, if we want to expand down and start getting into auto crafting and things like that, I'm not sure how feasible that is right now. We're definitely going to need that controller for the extra channels. We also ran a keyboard that goes all the way down to our mob farm way down there in order to grab the mob drops whoops, and have them available uh, at our crafting terminal up above. Now, I have made some changes since last episode. We brought this keyboard all the way down, and the ME storage bus is set to bi-directional attached to the back of our item barrel connector. In the front here, I have our advanced item collector grabbing the items and putting it into this chest. From this chest, we're extracting out using two different item conduits with maximum speed upgrades. And those are extracting and going into this trash can first. It has a priority of five. So it at first attempts to go into here and if the filter allows items to be thrown away then they get thrown away otherwise then the items travel over into these barrels now i've gone through all of the different barrels and all the drops that we had in here and i removed some of the items that i put into barrels down here that we're not actually collecting from the mob farm like originally i had put arrows into a barrel here but we don't get arrows from this mob farm at all yeah, I've uh, removed a couple of extraneous barrels, and now we don't really have any extra free open slots. So the way that's going to work, if we get anything else that needs to get stored, it'll just end up here in this chest because it can't fit into the barrels, and it can't get thrown away. So we should end up with, like, diamond leggings and a diamond helmet. Those are the only two diamond pieces of armor that we don't currently have filtered. So if those ever drop, they'll end up in this chest, and we'll just have to come down here and check it every once in a while. But I think this is probably the best way of doing it. And then our applied energistic system can freely take items out and put items back into these barrels. I think that's just gonna work fine. Okay, so that's where we are with this. Today, what I wanted to start working on is going through some of these quests that we have not been able to do yet, but now we're able to do. So everything on this page uh, except for this furnace upgrade, we cannot do this processing upgrade yet. This is a little expensive that requires us going to extra plant dimension and having these ultimate ingots. Yeah, uh, we can't do this one just yet. Um, but we can do the Zenith furnace. We should be able to do the Ender Dragon Revival quest and the growth crystal and then these cobblestone generators. Let's go ahead and knock these things out. I think that's going to make sense. So Zenith Furnace wants us to upgrade our current Endist Furnace to the red one, but that requires another star. Now, I was kind of thinking this is probably going to be the perfect opportunity for us to get ourselves the Industrial Foregoing Mob Crusher. Uh, which one? This one. So this is not super expensive. This is something that we absolutely can do right now. Let's go take a look if we are able to craft it. I'm not sure if I have all the stuff. Nope, we don't have all the stuff. So we need redstone alloy, signalum gear. Uh, we are going to need plastic. Actually, can we do plastic? That might be something that's going to hold us back. Uh, we need dry rubber, which comes from tiny dry rubber, which we need the latex processing unit. Okay, and then we also need to get ourselves a rubber extractor. Aha. Uh -huh. Uh, how close are we on that? Uh, okay, so let's let's start bookmarking some things here. So we want the mob crusher. That's going to require us to get plastic. So we need the latex processing unit. And then we're also going to need the, was it tree extractor? I can't remember what it's called. What is it called? Tree fluid extractor. Whoops. Bookmark that one. So tree fluid extractor is not expensive at all also. So I'm going to go ahead and craft up these three items. Just a lot of off-camera off, off crafting stuff. Let me go and do that real quick, and we will be right back, guys. Okay, so we now have a tree fluid extractor, and we have a latex processing unit. So the tree fluid extractor needs to be sat in front of a log, and then it extracts tree fluid from it. Uh, and it varies tree to tree. 
So if we look up latex, we can see all the different types of woods that we get or we can use for this. So acacia wood gives us three millibuckets per every five ticks. Dark oak is two millibuckets for every five ticks. Uh, oak is one, spruce is one, 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 and one. So really the best one that we want to use is going to be acacia or cha-cha, however you want to pronounce it. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so this is the one that gives us the highest millibucket yield and the highest average number. So we need to get ourselves some acacia wood. We can do that pretty easily just by using our wood essence, right? And we, then we constantly have to use wood essence. Um, I think what I want to do though is use a bonsai tree and we can just have a bonsai tree constantly growing and producing it and essentially just being free wood for us to do this with. So saplings require us to have nature essence plus two wood essence. Let's see if we can do this real quick. Uh, Acacia sapling. Oh, we don't have any of that stuff here. Nature and wood essence. I know we have them. We just don't have any in the system right now. So there's nature and two wood essence. Cool. Yeah, the latex processing, we want this going pretty much nonstop for forever. So we want to make sure we have stuff that'll go nonstop for forever pretty much. Um, so the next thing that we want to do is get ourselves a hopping bonsai. One of these guys, we've used those before. We are going to want to get ourselves a drawer. This way we can set a filter and only set it to accept the acacia wood. That way we're going to throw away any saplings, any sticks, any leaves. We don't care about any of that. We just care about the wood. That's the only thing that we want. Okay. So we have the sampling, the hopping bonsai that, um, I guess the other thing that we could look at, oops, uh, uses on this guy. We could look at the bonsai tree and the different types of soil. So does this dirt or grass? So grass gives us a drop chance of 100%. Uh, dirt gives us a grow time of 10% faster, but 90%. I think we'll do grass. It, it just looks better either way. Uh, I don't see any grass in here. Maybe I got it in my dink knoll. Pretty sure we have grass around here somewhere, though. Yeah, we got grass right here. Okay, cool. So we'll put grass in the hopping bonsai with the sapling. Cool. And then we are also gonna need to set the filter right away. So I'll just grab some of this wood essence and we'll make some acacia wood. Doot, doot, doot. Cool. All right, so we'll set the filter in the drawer with that. We're gonna need a key to lock it. Um, and then we're going to need to extract the wood from the drawer and put it into something that's going to place it in front of the tree fluid extractor. So we could use something like a mechanical user. Do we have a mechanical user or a block placer? Can we make either of these? A mechanical user looks like it is rather inexpensive. So I will make that and make this. That'll be perfect. Okay. And then we just need uh to extract from this into this guy and i guess we can use a translocator item conduit probably conduits cheap and we have them okay i think we should be good to go now the other question is where we're going to put this thing i suppose we can just throw it over here and have a little blank spot All right so we want a tree fluid extractor that is facing the opposite way I wanted that to face. <laughs> we can put the tree fluid extractor here. We'll put a mechanical user. Oop, give me that block. Give it. Mechanical user right here. This will be set to... No, we want right click and we want it to do... Place block. Random slot is fine. Now we just need to get the bonsai and the drawer going here. So we can put the, I guess just do this drawer plus acacia plus locket plus hopping bonsai grass sapling. Okay. So the only other thing that we need to do now is just extract out that drawer into the mechanical user. And then we should be pretty much good to go. So extract always active, and that's gonna be set to insert. So all that wood should be here, which gets placed here, and then the tree fluid extractor is doing what it needs to do, perfect. So this should be set up to work indefinitely, and I'm pretty sure that we're gonna be getting more wood than we'll be using. So this thing should eventually just fill up. Uh, let's take a look at the mechanical user. 
Yeah, we got 17 in there. We started with 16, and there's one right here. So we are well on our way. Cool. So that's all set. The next thing we need to do is extract out of the tree fluid extractor into some kind of a large tank. So we are always keeping this latex. And then from that tank, we can put into the uh, latex processing unit. Um, yeah, I think that's the next thing that we want to do. So I'll just go ahead and make up another... Uh, do we do a demonically gargantuan drum? Do we have an extra one? We have this one that has creosote oil in it. I guess I'll just make another drum. I can't remember like how the processing unit works if this is going faster than it. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Okay, well anyway, let me go ahead and get some stuff done off camera. We'll, we'll be right back. Okay, so I made another demonically gargantuan drum to put as a buffer between our latex pro or I'm sorry, our yeah, tree fluid extractor and our latex processing unit. Not really sure that was necessary. I'm kind of looking at this and this is kind of slow to fill and I don't really know how fast this particular machine works, but I guess if we ever do add in more tree fluid extractors, like we could probably stack this or, you know, do something where we have more of them going into our drum here, it might be worth it. But either way, uh, we have water and the latex back here. Uh, yeah, we have water back here and the latex going into this machine. We need to give it some RF. And it looks like we can put upgrades in here to make this go faster, but it doesn't go fast enough. But let's go ahead and throw a specter coil on there. And there we go, tiny dry rubber. Okay, so that's using 100 millibuckets for each one of these tiny dry rubbers. So it is 900 millibuckets for each plastic. Okay. So there is one. Oh, you know what? We need two, don't we? We need, um, yeah, we need two plastic in order to do this. And that is the dry rubber. Okay. So we need nine more of these, four more, three more. And then we should be able to smelt these. I don't know if when you smelt that in our furnace over there with the upgrade, if you get two for each one of them, or if you only get one, I guess we'll find out here very soon. So get rid of that, do this, two dry rubber, and then we smelt that to turn it into the plastic. And no, it's just one to one. Okay, well, now we know. So now that we have this set, the mob crusher, we should be able to do that, and there we go, awesome. So that should be another quest complete. We've gotten one for every machine so far. Huh. Uh, we'll need another specter coil here as well. Okay, so this mob crusher, we should be able to put downstairs uh, where we're spawning in the wither boss, and this should be able to kill it. Now, this thing does require us to have a upgrade in it, and I think it's the plus two upgrade. It is, yeah, because by default, it does like a one by one range. Let's take a look at this. We can do show working area. Yeah, so it's a one by one. So if we add a plus one, that'll make it a, what is that, a three by three? Maybe we'll, we only need the plus one? No, we need the plus two. Um, the inside of our mob farm is a three by three, and this is gonna be outside the wall, so it actually needs to be like in a seven by seven? Is that right? No, it needs to be a five by five. Yeah, so I think the plus two is what we need. Okay, so let's take a look at making the plus two. This guy, that's rather inexpensive, uh, and that requires two more plastic. Okay, so we need to wait for 18 more of those tiny dry rubber. Uh, how are we doing over here? Oh, yeah, we're good, and I thought that was gonna take a little bit of time. Yep, so we got two more of those. We should be able to make the plastic that we need. Let's throw that right into here, two of those. Take that, smelt them. Awesome. Okay, so we have this all set. Now we should be able to make our plus two upgrade. I hope this is the right one. It's really hard for me to kind of imagine the size that we need. I think that's right. Yeah, I think that should be okay. Let's take this downstairs and then we can set it up at the wither boss area and just kind of take a look at it. Where is our wither boss thing? Is it down lower? Right here. Okay, so we want this guy to be right here. We'll turn the show working area on. So yeah, that's kind of in this block. Now if we put this in here, 
yeah, that takes up the entire area that we want. So anything that spawns in here should be affected by this thing. Cool. So the next thing we want is to put a specter coil on here to give it power. All right, we should be good to go. So this should allow us to easily uh, kill wither bosses as we spawn them in. We shouldn't have to like manually do it like a savage anymore. We can do it like a sophisticated Minecrafter. Uh, wither, skeleton skull, let's grab some of these. And I think I have soul sand in here. I do, perfect. And if this works pretty well, I might spawn a few of them just so we have them for later. Uh, let's turn off the working area thing. Okay, very good. All right, so let us try spawning in a wither boss and make sure this works. If not, we can manually kill it. But definitely wanna make sure this is going to do its thing. And uh, worst case scenario, the explosion from the wither boss like breaks the mob crusher block and it falls into the void. I don't think that's gonna happen though. Uh, all right, so the wither boss died. This is still here and we got a lot of stuff for it. I think we're pretty, pretty much good to go. Ah, this is also make it essence. I forgot that would be a thing. Um, I'm not sure if we need to keep essence since essence and liquid XP are essentially the same thing and we have like a stupid amount of liquid XP. Okay, okay. Well, we definitely want to extract out of here and put into like a chest. So I guess adding a chest, some kind of way to extract into that chest and then we can uh, look at potentially spawning in a bunch of wither bosses. I'm not sure like how many we need, but uh, from the quest that we have right now, we need at least five nether stars. So we need four to do the respawning of the dragon in, and then one more for the zenith furnace, right? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and work on that. We'll be back, guys. So we ended up getting 21 nether stars. I used all of those wither skeleton skulls, plus we ended up getting all of these nether star shards, and eight of those wrapped around eight nether star will duplicate a nether star. Mm-hmm. So we ended up getting a little bit extra here. So we're up to 26 nether stars now. So that's not bad. Okay, so we needed one of those to upgrade our furnace to the zenith furnace. That's what we're trying to do right now. So zenith furnace. This thing requires us to have the nether star, some blaze rods, and some nether brick. Blaze rods, nether brick. Yep, we are pretty much good to go here. Let's grab our furnace. Uh. Pop this off. Guess I'll just break everything. <laughs> okay, uh, so we have our item translocators, liquid translocators, so our endless furnace here, and then we got the upgrades back. Okay, very good. Uh, so we want to upgrade that to a zenith furnace. So this essentially will cook an item every tick, so 20 items per second, which is going to be pretty crazy. Put that back here. So item translocator, this needs to be set to that. We need to put our upgrades back in here. Ore processing, liquid fuel, speed upgrade, all of those things. All right, and then go back downstairs a little bit here and hook everything up to this. So again, the bottom of this thing, we need whoop, uh, our item translocator put here with the glowstone. Okay, and... How do we do this? I guess we have the liquid translocator here. Okay, so everything should be set back up the way it was before. We should be pretty much ready to do this. Uh, so if we wanted to smell something, I don't know, cobblestone for instance, if we want to turn that into stone, this should go uh, pretty quickly. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad, two stacks of stone. Yeah, I like it. And I think you can further accelerate that with the astral sorcery tick acceleration. It'll do multiple per tick which could be really, really powerful, depending on how much stuff we need to smelt in the future. But yeah, getting that done was really good. Okay, so let's claim this reward. Um, then we need this one, the end crystal. So this does require the Carmenite stuff, and we don't have a whole lot of that. Uh, Carmenite, we actually have four, and we need four to do this. Oh, this also requires blood magic. Right, right, right. So a decent amount of steel, and then we're gonna need eight blank slates, which is imbued inscription tile. Blank slate, imbued, well we have eight of those. Uh, I guess we could do that? What tier is this? That's a tier one, okay. Well, you know what? I think we should be able to do that. Where is our blood altar? It's over here, we never really 
did a whole lot with blood magic, but we can do three of these right now. Yep, so I'll go ahead and put those through. Oop, I need an empty hand to extract out of there. So there's a second or a third, no, second one. Oh, dang it, empty hand again. And there's a third one. Okay, good. Uh, so we need to get more blood in there. So I can right click. Yeah, just right click myself a little bit. Don't kill myself though. <laughs> uh, get some food going here so we recover our HP kind of quickly. How much we have in there? 4,000. We need 5,000. There we go. Perfect. So with that amount, we should be able to do the rest of these. All right, so now that we have our blink slates and I just craft up a little bit more steel, we should be able to do these blink runes that we need. So there is one, two, three, four. Oh, you know what? That's only half the amount we need. <laughs> okay, well, I kind of, I kind of failed, guys. That's fine. Uh, so there's one, two, three, four of those, and then the end crystal itself. There is two of them. Yeah, I need to do eight more of these runes. All right, so now we have four end crystals. There we go. So quest should now be complete. Haha. -ha. Okay, we'll put those away. <laughs> We're not actually going to spawn in the end dragon right now, but I just wanted to complete this quest and get that knocked out. Uh, another one that it wants us to do is this growth crystal tier three. Let's take a look at this guy. Get rid of these bookmarks. Uh, so that requires a growth crystal tier two plus the end crystals that we just made. And then some hardened enderium glass and growth accelerators. Okay. So we got some things that we need to do. So growth accelerators, that requires blocks of inferium essence. I don't remember if we had any of that. We don't. Okay. So uh, we need a total of four of those per one of these. And that is going to be 16 all said and done. So do we have enough for 16 of these? I am very certain we do. And for those... And so we have everything except for the growth crystal, which we already have made and the hardened glass, which can we just craft it this way? We don't have the stuff. Okay. So if we wanted to make this, we can do it in the induction smelter to hardened glass plus enderium. Let us do that. Hardened glass. I'm going to make two recipes of these. We have two growth crystal tier two, so I'd like to upgrade both of those if possible. So we'll do that. And then induction smelter. This one. That and that. Oh, unlock that. There we go. There's a hardened enderium glass. And then the uh, growth crystals. Where do we put those? I don't remember where I put those. Those would be right here. Right. We have one right here anyway. Uh, the other one, is it in here? I know we have two of them. I don't remember where I put it. Aha, I found the other ones right underneath the seed analyzer. <laughs> it was hiding from me. Okay, so we have both of these guys now. And then we can... I guess we're going to make 16 more of these. So 16 of those, four more of these, and then put all that stuff away. And then we should be able to do... Two of these, which is awesome. Okay, quest complete. Oh, yeah. So I'll place that one here, place that one back under here. Hopefully the uh, the dark outline <laughs> won't confuse me this time. Uh, all right, so let's grab some grass. There we go. Awesome. Okay, so that's all done. I like it. So going back to the quest book, we can claim this. And now we just have these two guys left to do. Um, I can't remember cobble. Yeah, we have the diamond cobblestone generator in here. So let's upgrade that to the tier four. Oh, I was thinking that's going to use blazer rods, but I forgot. The recipe has been changed. So it is lava wood, in fact. So lava wood is lava poured onto planks in a smeltery setting. I guess it doesn't necessarily have to be a smeltery. Let's grab um, a casting basin. We'll grab, how about a translocator? That should be fine. Liquid translocator. Uh, and then planks. Now we need eight of those. Right? What was that? It was this guy. Yeah, we need eight of those. 
So we should be able to steal lava essentially from anywhere that's being, from where it's being produced. So like right here, for instance, if we put the casting basin right, right there, and then we attach a liquid translocator right here, and then set it to an any, that should be able to feed lava into this thing. Yeah, that should work just fine. Okay, well, we just need to wait for this to happen eight times and we'll be ready to go. Well, I just set up a simple automation for this. I'm not really sure how much of this stuff we're gonna need, but I just figured we'll do a full stack of it. Yeah, so just hopper into the top of the casting basin going to a hopper that's not going into anything. Yeah, we'll just let it do a full stack. We might need that in the future for more of these and I don't wanna have to waste time later on. Uh, but now that we have the lava wood, we should be able to upgrade our cobblestone generator, there it is, and quest complete for that. So the next one is the emerald one, and that requires us to have blocks of emerald. Emerald, we don't have blocks, but we can definitely turn them into blocks. So that is gonna make seven. We'll need a little bit more here to do nine. One more. There we go, nine. Oh no, I guess we only needed eight, didn't we? We only needed eight, my mistake. Okay, so now that we have that, put those away, we can do one of those, one of these, one of those, and there we go, there is the highest tier cobblestone generator, awesome. Okay. So now we have that stuff all done. So the only thing that's left on the very first page is this furnace upgrade, processing upgrade, which we can't do yet. We need these ultimate ingots. That's like pretty much impossible for us to do right now. And then we needed to get ourselves the antimatter, I think is what it's called, in order for us to get, uh, yeah, these anti-bones for the canisters. Okay, so we're pretty much done on the very first page. That's as far as we can go for now. Uh, beta tab, though, uh, this has got the Woot stuff on it, and this is kind of interesting. This is another way to farm monsters. But more importantly, it's a way that you can farm normally not farmable monsters. So I think this is something that we'll be looking at here very, very soon. I would definitely want to get these things made. Uh, I guess we can make the hammer real quick, or I guess it wants us to make the anvil. Is this, I haven't even looked at this. Is this like super expensive? Lava infused obsidian. What is this even used for? Interesting. Okay, well, lava infused obsidian. So that is compressed obsidian. So that is nine obsidian on the workbench plus lava in an inf lava infuser. So lava infuser is like the first thing we need. So we need lava crystals. And that comes from lava or lava crystal. And I think you can find those in the nether. Let's let's head to the nether real quick and see if we can come up with that. All right, guys, so here in the nether, I was able to find an ore lava crystal. And that gets us three of them with fortune. I guess we're using fortune four because of our astral sor sorcery perk along with our fortune three pickaxe. Yeah, it looks like you can find them pretty much all over at like lava level. What is this? Frost burn ice. Okay, so those hurt. Does this hurt? This These don't hurt but there could be lava directly below, so let's not vein mine while standing on it. Uh, all right, let's grab this. Oop, that hurts. So we're up to 30 of these. I really don't know uh, how much of these we need can be obtained by mining. Okay, so the uses on those, we can turn into the blocks, we can turn it into lava crystals. Um, we can turn into the infused lava crystal. Looks like we can burn them. Smelts 100 items. So these things act like a lava bucket, essentially, right? Uh, 200 RF we do in the steam dynamo. Okay. Well, anyway, let me go ahead and finish up collecting a bunch of these, and then we will continue on. All right, so that was pretty productive. We ended up with over two stacks of lava crystals, and in order to make the lava infuser, yeah, we have to use the workbench, which we have over here. Okay. So if we do that and that, we should be able to make this guy. Very good. I don't know if there's a quest for this or not. Doesn't seem like it. We'll put the lava infuser over here. Uh, I was looking at this and it says, uh, used for infusing lava crystals and obsidian blocks into lava infused obsidian, you need to provide it with lava, but with lava buckets in order to work. Okay. 
So in order for this thing to work, it needs lava buckets. I, it doesn't say anything about piping lava in, so I'm not sure if you can do that or cannot. Well, anyway, we need... How many of these? We need compressed obsidian infused with lava. It doesn't say how much, uh, but we need three of those. So let's make some compressed obsidian, which I assume we can just craft like this. Yeah. Well, that says 1x compressed obsidian. Is it compressed obsidian made on the workbench then? Is it a different type? Maybe it is. Aha. Okay, so that's the armor plus one. Okay, so we need three of those. And then we need to infuse those with some lava buckets, apparently. So let's grab some buckets and we can grab some lava very easily. Guys, I put this molten clay bucket in here and I can't take it out. Like I can take these buckets out. That's no, no problem. But I can't click this one out. It's like stuck in there. I'm going to have to get like an export bus with a fuzzy card or something and then like try and extract it <laughs> manually. But yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely in there and it ain't coming out. All right, so we got three buckets of lava here. Uh, all right, so let's put a bucket here. Oh, okay. So one bucket does multiple things. I was expecting it to be one bucket per item, but that is not the case. And it is still making particles. Oh, okay. So you have a certain amount of time. You put a bucket in there and you can do as many as it can do during that time, like a furnace. I got it. Very good. All right, so, oh wait, no, 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 we still need, oh no, we're fine. Uh, so dark steel anvil, Stygian iron ingots. I don't know how you get this stuff. Um, oh, you can just craft it, aha. Uh -huh. So we have to make, yeah, hammer. And that is pretty easy to do. So if we come over here and do one of those, one of those, one of these, I think that's a quest actually, isn't it? That was like one of the first things we needed. Mmm, back. No, the uh, the icon here is for that, but we actually need to make the anvil itself. Okay, so we have the, the hammer, iron block. Oh man, so we need nine, 10, 11. So if we can do this, I don't know if this doubles. I assume this would double that or no, it's just one to one. Okay. And then can we make the compressed block here? We can. Awesome. And if we do one of these, we still can't do that because we need a dark steel anvil. Dark steel. Oh, you know what? We got enough here. I was thinking we wouldn't have enough. So three of those, one of those, one of these, and boom, we got ourselves that anvil. I was hoping for a quest complete sound. There it is. <laughs> Sweet. Well, there's nothing that this thing, there's no interface or anything like that on it. But guys, we have run out of time for today. Mm -hmm. So next episode, we should start looking at Woot. I would like to see if there is a way that we can use Woot to our advantage. Maybe start collecting, I don't know, can you do like nether stars and stuff? I hear that you could do some other kind of stuff to help us get the Frisian ingots and things like that a little bit easier. So we'll probably be looking at that next episode if we can even set up the Woot Farm itself. I don't want to get ahead of myself. I haven't looked at the recipes for this stuff yet. But anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.